Hello everyone! Welcome to new subscribers and welcome back to my sustaining followers. Over the past decade, I have published about 60 journal articles and reviewed several hundred manuscripts. Through this process, I have learned that academic writing and publication have rules and formulas. But no one told me these rules and formulas. I had to learn them by experience. I will share everything I know about academic writing in the next few episodes. For the first video, I want to talk about the fundamental rules of academic writing. These tips are applicable to every type of academic writing, such as writing seminar papers, conference papers, journal articles, theses and dissertations across different fields. You can apply these rules right away. If you follow the fundamental rules, your writing will read smoothly and be more logical. Here are the fundamental rules I keep in mind for all of my academic writing. Number one, create an outline before you start to write. A research paper usually consists of five sections, introduction, literature review, method, research, and discussion and conclusion. Each section has its own length and content. For example, for a journal article manuscript, the first section, the introduction, is usually about two to three pages in our field. These two to three pages consist of seven to eight paragraphs. Each of these paragraphs has its own main idea. A dissertation, however, might need about a 10-page introduction with many paragraphs. Before I start to write, I create an outline of the entire paper that includes headings, subheadings, and the main idea of each paragraph. Upcoming videos will cover specific structures for each of these sections. Number two, each paragraph has one topic sentence and a few supporting sentences. In a research paper, the first sentence of each paragraph is usually the topic sentence or focus sentence. It is followed by a few supporting sentences. A topic sentence summarizes the main idea of the paragraph. Supporting sentences support the topic sentence of the paragraph and provide details that explain the main idea of the paragraph, such as providing examples or evidence. Here is a sample paragraph from an earlier work of mine. This is an opening paragraph of an article I wrote about music piracy. As you see on the screen, this paragraph consists of six sentences. The first sentence is a topic sentence, and the sentence number two through six are supporting sentences. The topic sentence states the pervasiveness of music piracy is an issue in the music industry. The subsequent sentences expand on the main idea by describing why it is an issue and providing some statistical evidence. Like this example, each paragraph should be structured with one topic sentence followed by several supporting sentences that elaborate the topic sentence. Number three, write simply. Write short and simple sentences and avoid long paragraphs. There is a misconception that sentences in an academic article should be long and complex. Many people mistakenly think that an article that is difficult to understand is a good one. That is absolutely not true. When something is hard to understand or explain, people tend to write that idea in a long, complex sentence. I have noticed that graduate students with limited publication experience tend to write long sentences. 
If a sentence is longer than two lines, it may be a run-on sentence. In any case, a sentence is more than three lines long, is usually longer than it should be. It becomes confusing to the readers, so break a long sentence into two or more sentences. When I review a manuscript for a journal, I often skim through it to evaluate the quality of writing before I actually start to read it. One easy to identify sign of poor writing is long paragraphs. When one paragraph is longer than a half of a page, it is a long paragraph. I often see paragraphs that are even longer than a page. And this kind of long paragraph tends to describe multiple ideas and is hard to follow. Authors who write a long paragraph often do not know the main point they are trying to make and readers struggle to figure it out. Revise long paragraphs so that they are shorter or break them into multiple paragraphs, each with their own topic. Another thing to keep in mind when you're trying to write simply is to minimize the use of adjectives and adverbs. When I'm in the process of revising a manuscript, I remove adjectives and adverbs that are unnecessary. After deleting these unnecessary words, my expression is more powerful and clear. Number four, use the active voice. This is one of the rules I have to keep reminding myself of because I tend to use a passive voice. Academic writing is a quite straightforward. Using an active voice presents your idea more clearly, concisely, and efficiently. Moreover, using an active voice helps to avoid making grammar mistakes. So this is a passive voice. The definition is not agreed upon by scholars and the same sentence changed to an active form would read scholars do not agree upon the definition. An active voice also helps readers to understand the meaning of the sentence better as the subject is much clearer. So if you are like me and tend to write in a passive voice, Look for passive sentences in your first draft and change them to active sentences in the second draft. Number five, write the first draft quickly, then revise and revise and revise again and again. There is no such thing as a good writer. There is only a good rewriter. Revision makes your writing greater. Don't try to write a perfect first draft. Write a first draft as quickly as possible, but revise it several times. Remember, professional writers have editors, peer reviewers, copy editors, etc. They go through many steps in making the final draft. You, as a student, might not have the luxury of a whole editing team. So you have to review and revise your own materials. But understand that a professional writer has a whole team reviewing, editing, and rewriting the original draft. And that is why it looks great. It has gone through several drafts. First draft, second draft, third draft, the editorial draft, the peer review draft, the copy editing draft, etc. It keeps getting better with every review and revision. Remember that proofreading is essential to any writer. Number six, read out loud as the last step. Before I submit a manuscript to a journal, I read it out loud. It often takes at least two full hours to read a 5,000 word manuscript. If a sentence does not read smoothly, it is an indication that you need to revise it a little more. I often find technical mistakes and other errors by reading out loud. 
In this episode, I talked about six fundamental rules I have followed in academic writing. They are number one, create an outline before starting to write. Number two, each paragraph has one topic sentence and a few supporting sentences. Number three, write simply. Write short and simple sentences and avoid long paragraphs. Number four, use the active voice. Number five, write the first draft quickly and then revise and revise again. Number six, read out loud as the last step. What is your writing tip? If you have your own suggestions about academic writing, please share them in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this content. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much for watching and I will be back with more ideas and tips to help you write better as an academic.